Our God is holy. Thank you, praise team, for blessing us uh, this morning and for us to the presence of the Lord and for being a blessing to us. Second Samuel chapter 6, starting at verse 16, and we'll commence the reading through verse 21. Second Samuel chapter 6. This is the amplified version of scripture. Then as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, David's wife, looked down from the window above and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she felt contempt for him in her heart because she thought him undignified. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent, which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of host armies. And distributed to all the people the entire multitude of Israel, both to men and women, to each a ring-shaped loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people departed each to his house. Then David returned to bless his household, but his wife Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious and distinguished was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself and stripped off his kingly robes. <clears throat> In the eyes of his servant maids, like one of the riffraff, who shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michael, It was before the Lord that I did this chose me above your father and all his house to appoint me as ruler over Israel, the people of the Lord. Therefore, I will celebrate in pure enjoyment before the Lord. You may be seated in God's presence. <clears throat> Can you um, put up verse 21, please? Thank you. I want to look at verse 21. So David said to Michael, it was before the Lord that I did this. Chose me above your father and all his house to appoint me as a ruler over Israel, the people of the Lord. Therefore, I will celebrate before the Lord. Come on, turn to the person on your left. To your left, yeah. To your, y'all know what y'all left is, right? <laughs> turn, to the, turn to the person on your left. Okay, here it goes. If you haven't spoken to them, here's your time to speak to them. Turn to the person on your left and say, take time time. to celebrate. celebrate. All right, and then we're going to do this easy. Look at the person on your right. Say, take time time. to celebrate. celebrate. All right, thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Take time to celebrate. Do you know how much God loves you? Do you really know how much God loves you? God so much loves his creation and the created that he loves them unconditionally. That God loves creation and the created and being the creator loves them unconditionally. And God wants to be in relationship with his creation and created. And it's not because God is needy. God doesn't need you or I. God doesn't need humanity, but God loves humanity, that he wants to be in relationship and fellowship with humanity. 
you and I, on the other hand, are needy. Yeah. You, you and I are, are needy. And in, in that need, we need a lot of things. Some more than others. Yeah, I know you're looking at your spouse right now. But the real truth of the matter is, all of us need God. Yes. All of us in sanctuary space need God, and even people who don't know God need God. All throughout, we see through this Bible from Genesis to Revelations, we see God's love for humanity and God longing and wanting to be in relationship with humanity. How do you know? How many times in this book we see people mess up? Sin. Disobey God, and God still in his unconditional love receives people back into fellowship. What's interesting is throughout the scripture, particularly Old Testament, how God reveals God's self to people is through symbols. So people can have an understanding of who God is. It, it actually, pastors, is a foreshadowing. Throughout the Old Testament, we see God foreshadowing of revealing God's self to humanity, of wanting to be in relationship and fellowship with us. The children of Israel are what is known as the chosen people, that God chooses the children of Israel to be his chosen people, that he chooses to be in relationship as an example of how he wants to be in relationship with us, that the children of Israel are disobedient, they cry out when they need help, they get full of themselves. That sounds a lot like church, don't it? <laughs> and all throughout that, we see how God is always initiating his love for humanity. And this particular passage of scripture that was read in our hearing, one has to go back to Exodus chapter 25, because here is what is known as the Ark of the Covenant. God is explicit in Exodus 25 of what the Ark of the Covenant is is to be in what it represents, a box two and a half feet long, one and a half feet wide, and one and a half feet high. And this Ark of the Covenant represents God. And God is particularly explicit about how he wants it built. Size, dimensions, weight, all those things, because here it is that God is specific in how he wants to design your life. He's specific about how he wants to design your life. And God says this, God says, build the Ark of the Covenant so that the Ark of the Covenant can go into the tabernacle or the Holy of Holies. Now, Levites, you are to carry the Ark of the Covenant on four poles. Because here it is for all of us, and that is this, that we are to carry God wherever we go. I, I just said something right there. We are to carry God wherever we go. Now, notice the Levites have the Ark of the Covenant on poles, and they are holding God up because, Brother Scott, wherever we go, we are supposed to lift him up, not self up. But God up, that we are supposed to lift God up. So God said, if I be lifted up, that I'll draw all men and women unto me. So the Levites are lifting God up because whenever you lift God up, then people have to pay attention to what you are lifting up. So as they are traveling and lifting God up, what happens is that they become too familiar with God. They become too comfortable with God because God gives them victory. Whenever they're facing enemies, God gives them victory, and they get so full of themselves that they start to believe and start to take God for granted. 
that every battle they're going to face, that they can do it their way. Never mind previously, they've got history of how God has delivered them after one thing, after another, after another. And here they are now is they are now taking God for granted because what happens is they fight the Philistine in 1 Samuel chapter 4 and the Philistines capture the ark of God. They capture the Ark of God, and now the Ark of the Covenant is now in the Philistine camp. And what happens is the Philistines see this from the Israelites because they identify that the Israelites have gotten victory after victory after victory. And what the Philistines say is, if we capture the Ark of God, then we're going to have the same luck. Yeah, I just said something right there, that, that God is not someone that stuff happens in your life by luck or by chance or by happenstance or by accident. And the Philistines said, you know what? If we can get the Ark of the Covenant in our camp, what we can do is we can have the same luck that the Israelites are having. You do know there are people who are close to you because you are connected to God, want to be connected to God, not to have a relationship because they think it works. They don't really ha want to have a fellowship or relationship with God, but they see your life and see how blessed you are and then believe, you know what, if I can just get some of that God that they have, that I can have the same luck that they have. But what you got to let people know, and that is this, that I ain't get this by luck. What you don't know is the stuff that I've had to go on through and the stuff that I've been through and the stuff that I've experienced and the stuff that I've, that's almost tried to take me out. You don't understand that this relationship is binded through experience and I've had to cry some bitter tears. I've been disappointed. I've had people walk out on me and the stuff that I've had to go on through that this thing between me and God is real. And yeah, young people, let me come get you. It's real, no cap. In other words, this, that it's real, that it's authentic, that me and God got a real relationship, that we talk like real, like real, between real interaction, that I tell God how I really feel. I ain't got time when I go to prayer talking about, I got to know every book from Genesis to Revelation talking about I got time to be all cute when the enemy is on my trail and I got bills to pay and health crisis. I got to be real with God. In other words, every now and again, I got to say this, God, I need you. And every now and again, I got to say, God, I want you. And, and God, I long for you. In fact, sometimes I stay on my knees and say, God, I ain't going to get off my knees until I hear from you. Because here it is. Any way you bless me. <laughs> I'm going to be satisfied. The Philistines capture the ark. And what happens is that they capture the ark. The Philistines start playing with God. And God then allows them or then God pronounces on them judgment because here it is you do know that God is judgmental I know we don't like to hear that word in church I know we like to hear the prosperity message but I'm a real Bible preacher that God is judgmental God is also gracious because here it is God is judgmental and God is gracious because if God wasn't God wouldn't be God that God is not one thing over the other or something than the other. That God is all that at the same time because he's God. And so here it is. The Philistines have captured the ark and now they have a health crisis within their camp. And then they say, you know what? Y'all can have the ark back. <laughs> that we knew if it's going to cause us this much problem, we would have never have captured the ark in the first place. And here it is in 2 Samuel chapter 6. That David has now recaptured the ark. And as David has now recaptured the ark, that David's whole premise of capturing the ark is to now place it back into Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the center, the heart. And here it is for us because where God really wants to be in your life and in my life is the center. That God wants to be at the heart of of the matter and is there anybody in the house who knows this that you can testify and say this that Jesus is the center of your joy come on come on somebody in the house that Jesus is 
the center of your joy that no matter what happens in life come hell or high water all I know is this and I'll plant my flag on this preachers that Jesus is the center of our joy and what David is doing with the ark is David is pacing it back into Jerusalem because David's trying to show the people that this that God is the center of our worship that God is the center of our worship. I'm glad you came today and I'm glad you're here this morning. But here it is. The reason why you in sanctuary space is because God is the center of your worship. And at some point in this service, you ought to say thank you. You ought to say, Lord, I appreciate you. And Lord, I lift you up. Because here it is. It could have been the other way. You do know there have been stuff that you and I have done this week for God to wipe us out. But God in his grace has granted us another chance. That God has granted us a second chance. Nah, child, I done blew that one. That God didn't grant me another chance. Nah, child, I done blew that one. God didn't grant me another chance. No, child, I done blew that one. That God didn't grant me another chance. Because here it is. God has granted me so many chances. I can't keep count no more. Oh, come on, don't you sit up in here acting like you're in church because you've been so good. God has looked beyond our faults, and he's met us our appointed need. And that's why I went into the sanctuary. I say this, I'm going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I'm going to come into his courts with praise. I'm going to be thankful unto him, and I'm going to bless his name. If you don't bless him, that's on you. But all I know is this, all that the Lord has done for me, I've got to bless his holy name and here David is David is now bringing the ark of the covenant back into Jerusalem but here it is that they bring the ark of the covenant on a cart God says in specific directions here Levites place God on four poles and lift God up now you want to come through with God on a cart, and here it is. They got the nerve, previously before riding with God on a cart, they got the nerve to be shouting. I'm in the book, we Second Samuel chapter 6. They got the nerve to be praising and shouting because here it is, their praise and shout ain't really about God. It ain't really about God because how you going to place God on a cart and how you going to place God below talking about you happy and celebrating God. How you going to make God beneath below anything talking about, yeah, then we really have good church today. Knowing that you have something else on your mind. Yeah, I'm a killer devil in here this morning. Because here it is, I don't care who any of us are, all of the time we come in worship space and worship setting, our mind ain't always on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I've been in church a minute, and here's what I can tell you, I've been doing this for a minute. If your mind ain't been on Jesus, I know sometimes mine ain't. Yeah, they singing too many songs. Yeah, he preaching too long. When we getting out of church, because you do know the commanders come on at 1 o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, oh, oh, don't let me get the sports fans. Oh, you do know that I got to go shopping at 1 o'clock. You do know that we got brunch reservations at 1 o'clock. Here, what taking him so long? We going to be late. Come on, come on, nudge somebody say, wake up because you're ready to fall asleep. <laughs> they, they bring into Jerusalem God on the cart. <laughs> and what happens is, as they bring God on the cart, that the oxen are, are using the cart or are pulling the cart. And what happens is, the Bible says that the, that the oxen stumble. <laughs> and when they stumble, that Uzzah touches the ark. That Uzzah tries to steady the ark. And when Uzzah tries to steady the ark, the Bible says God strikes him dead. Because here it is, God don't need nobody to balance him. <laughs> that, 
that God don't need you and I to steady him that God is in full control and God don't need our hands involved in stuff that our hands don't need to be involved in that here it is they Uzzah tries to steady God he tries to balance God and God strikes Uzzah dead because here it is God says that's not my instructions that's not my commands and that's not my directions so Uzzah you got to be penalized for it and everybody's got to see but here's my first point of the text is that the ark of the covenant represents God's presence did I just say that right that God's presence that whenever people seen the ark of the covenant that they had reverence for what it represented that means that it was God's very presence among the people and here it is for all of us that means this that means the reason why we're here today is because of God's presence that if you ain't felt the presence of God, you may need to check yourself. If you ain't felt the presence of God in this service, then you may need to open your eyes. And if you ain't felt the presence of God, you may need to walk, walk back out and come back in. In fact, this, and if you don't walk back out and come back in and don't feel the presence of God, then you're in the wrong place. That wherever we go, we should be the Lord's presence. That means when you go on your job and no people gossiping and no people lying and no people cursing like sailors, I know you don't curse as much. Understand this, that you go with the Lord's presence. That means when you walk into the supermarket and you go into the community, you ought to be the Lord's presence. That means when other people look at us, they ought to say, there's something different about him and there's something different about her. I don't know what it is, but there's something different. And I don't know about you. I can say this, that wherever you go, take the Lord's present with you. In fact, this you got to consecrate some places because you and I know this. I know it's fall, but you and I have been at enough family reunions. To know that we got some healing people in our family. And sometimes they say this, oh, here he come. Here she come. You know them old holy rollers. That old church boy and that old church girl. But all I know is this, when you get in trouble, you call this old church boy and this old church girl. Because I know this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of salvation. And so here it is. They are pulling the cart Uzzah touches the cart, he dies, and so David becomes fearful about Uzzah dying. And so what David does is, David gives the Ark of the Covenant to Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the Bible says that when the Ark of the Covenant is in Obed-Gittim's household, that it blesses his household. It blesses his household. And when it blesses his household, the Bible says it blesses his household for three months. And when it blesses his household for three months, David says, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that the Ark of the Covenant has blessed Obed Etam's house for three months? And what I'm trying to tell somebody is, here's my second point is, that whenever you got God's presence, you also got God's peace. You also got God's peace. And what the Bible says is that the blessed Obed-Edom household wasn't mean that it gave Obed-Edom tangible things. It wasn't, didn't mean that he gave Obed-Edom a new car. It wasn't mean that he gave Obed-Edom a new house. It didn't mean that he gave Obed-Edom some money. It didn't mean he gave Obed-Edom a boo. What it means is that he gave Obed-Edom peace. Because here it is, you can have a new job. Ain't got no peace. You can have a new house, ain't got no peace. You can have a luxury car, and have no peace. You can be in a relationship, ain't got no peace. And what God does to obey Edom's household is, he gave him peace. Because all I know is this, I've had one before and couldn't get no sleep. I've been in a nice house before, couldn't lay my head down. I've had a brand new car before, and it got wrecked. And all I'm trying to tell you is this, that in life, all I want is some peace. Come on, come on, is anybody in the house... That all you want is some peace. You can be catching hell all up in your life and folk can know all your business about the stuff that you've done. But all I know is this. I got God's peace. In other words, this, I don't care what you say about me. I got the Lord's peace in my life. I can say later for you, Jack. Later for you, sis. I got the Lord's peace. And I know that the Lord will fight my battles. 
Come on, is there anybody in the house who knows this? That all I want is the Lord's peace. I ain't got time to be arguing with you. I ain't got time to be fighting with you. I ain't got time to be debating with you. I ain't got time to be criticizing. I ain't got time to be gossiping. I want the Lord's peace in my life. In fact, this, you got to learn this. When people are talking about stuff that you want to be a part of, that Jesus tells us this, that dust your feet off and keep on walking. Every now and again, you got to bless people with your non-presence. God blesses obed Eden's house for three months and David says this, I, I want some of that. I, I want some of that. Come on, New Jack City fans. New Jack City fans, 1991. Um, come on, come on, somebody. Wesley Snipes, y'all, y'all know Wesley. Yeah, I got some day in the house. Yeah. Um, what do you say? He get on there. He said, this is the flavor that you save a neighbor. <laughs> Every now and again, you got to tell people, and I got peace. This is the flavor that you savor, neighbor. Come on, you're going to practice it when you go to work tomorrow and someone say, why you ain't getting involved in that? Because you're going to say, this is the flavor that you savor, neighbor. New Jack City, 1991. (laughs) That David says he wants the peace that bypasses all understanding. So David gets the ark back, and when David gets the ark back, the Bible says now that he has the ark, and the ark is returning to Jerusalem, that David starts to dance. (laughs) He starts to dance. In fact, the Bible says that he does an undignified dance. So undignified that Michael sees David, and she sees him from the window, and she says, "Mm, look at him. Come on, sisters, help me out. Mm. Ain't that something? He a whole mess. And this is 2023, so I can imagine what she did when she seen him. Man, you know that David got the nerve. Matter of fact, child, you look at this. Look at the king dancing like that. He dancing all undignified so much that he didn't came out of his royal clothes. He dancing like that. And you know how many times that was shared? (laughs) That they were sharing and through them sharing was all them comments. Because you know what people say? Look at that. All that. The king got the nerve to be dancing like that. He ought to be ashamed. He's supposed to be the king. The Bible says that David danced and David danced and the Bible says that David made sacrifice because David understood about recapturing the ark that it was a sacrifice and here is my last point and that is this that David understood about sacrificing his dancing because David understood the sacrifice of praise that here it is y'all that we bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of of the Lord. And here it is, y'all. I'm about to done. I'm about to shout out my own shoes. And I'll see y'all next time and next week. Same back time, a same back channel. Because here it is that David begins to dance. And when David begins to dance, David begins to have a praise party. David has a praise party because David understands this, how far the Lord has brought him from. And David merely has a flashback to what the Lord has done for him. I know I'm talking about David, but some of y'all miss it. Because if you have a flashback about what God has done for you and how God has worked in your life and how God has moved in your life and how God has provided in your life and how God has studied your life. And how God has healed you. And how God has been a refuge uh, in the time of trouble. And all that the Lord has done. And how God has blessed you. I've got to give him praise. Uh, I've got to to give him glory. I've got to give him honor. I've become uh, more dignified than this. Uh, All that the Lord has done for me. You want me to sit down and and shut up? Uh, The devil is a lie. In fact, this here it is. Is, y'all give somebody an SOS. That means just touch your neighbor and say SOS. Slide over some. 
This praise is for who God is. This praise is for how he brought me out. This praise is for what he's done for me. This praise is for what he's going to do for me. I said, SOS, slide over, son. In fact, this, find you a dance partner. When your favorite song came on, you ain't want to dance by yourself. But if you had to, you would. But you wanted to dance with somebody. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, can I have this dance? This is a praise party. We're going to praise him. We're going to bless him. We're going to magnify him. We're going to lift him. We're going to exalt him. We're going to raise him. We're going to say, thank you, Lord. Is there anybody in the house who can say this? I, I, I feel what is in my feet. I feel is there anybody in the house who, who just wants to give the Lord's name praise? I said, is there anybody in the house who, who wants to give my God praise? The Lord's been good to you. The Lord's opened doors for you. The Lord's made ways for you. I said, is there anybody in the house who, who wants to give the Lord's name praise? Let everything that has breath give the Lord's name praise. If you got breath in your body, you ought to praise him. If your heart is beating, you ought to praise him. If you can see, you ought to praise him. If you can hear, you ought to praise him. If you got activity of your limbs, you ought to praise him. If you can run, you ought to praise him. If you can jump, you ought to praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon time. Praise him in the evening. Praise him all day long. In heaven it goes like this. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's worthy of praise. I said he's worthy of praise. Lift up the head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. The everlasting doors that the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Strong and mighty. He is the King of glory, the Lord, mighty in battle. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. I told y'all, SOS, slide over some. I've got to give his name praise. Come on, y'all. I've got to give his name praise. Come on. I've got to give his name praise. Come on. I've got to give his name praise he's been good to you come on he's been good to you hadn't he been good to you he's looked beyond our faults and he's met us at our appointed need God is good and he's worthy to be praised God is worthy and he's worthy to be praised one more time for the Holy Ghost God is worthy and he's worthy to be praised. Oh, come on. Let's go. Come on. We might as well go there. We, we there now. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Give it to him. Come on. Give it to him. He's worthy. Come on. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. All that's within me. Bless his holy name. Come on. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Come on, you've been holding that. You've been holding this shout. Come on, you've been holding this shout. Come on, you've been holding this shout. Come on, get it out. Get it out. You've been holding this shout. Come on, get it out. Get it out.
Come on. Started me on way. The Lord is blessing me right now. All right, all right. We gonna we gonna we gonna keep going, Dad. We gonna say the Lord is blessing us right now. We don't want this to be personal. We want this to. You want our neighbors to celebrate. Come on, the Lord is blessing us right now. He is blessing us. Us. Yeah. There you go. Come on, Lord is blessing us. Look at your neighbor and say, Lord is blessing us. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, Lord is blessing us. Yes. He woke us up. He woke us up. And started us. Lord is blessing us. One more time. Come on. The Lord is blessing us. Is blessing us. Right now. Is blessing us. He woke us up. And started us. Is blessing us. Put some on it, 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 put some on it. Which, what is interesting about that text at the end, it says that, it says, notice, notice that the Bible says, that David danced out of his robe. Because here's the reason why. When you, when you come to praise and worship, ain't about you. David said, I'll come on more dignified. It's because it ain't about me being king. I don't praise God because of me being king. I praise God for who he is. And by the way, Michael, if you're watching me, you missing your blessing. You, I saw a tell folks, you want to get your shout on, you want to get your praise on, and folks looking at you said they don't take all that. Speak for yourself. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. And here it is, you ain't got to jump and shout. That don't mean that you don't love God either. Because here it is, I can tell you, along my pastor here is, we ain't going to jump and shout every Sunday. Because here's what it is, because I ain't going to swallow and shout and scar and hoop off every Sunday. Because here's what I know, and that is this, that good meat makes its own gravy. <laughs> and, and, our, and, our, and our praise is personal, which means is that you may sit in your seat and you may cry. That's all right. And if somebody looking at you say, why are you crying, baby? You say to them, why are you looking at me for? Because here's, here's, what, here's what I can tell you. There, here's what I can tell you. There are people who come to church to spectate and not participate. We are, we are in a consumer-driven culture, and we come to church to be consumed. 
that we, we come to church to be entertained. We come to church to literally lay on the metaphorical couch and say, help me feel better. No, 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 no. This is a participatory experience that you and I bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord, which means is that some days you don't feel like bringing it, but it's a sacrifice, which means is I'm going to bring it, although I really don't want to give it up, I'm still going to bring it to him because he's that good. Amen. David dances out of his robe, and the Bible says that Micah, Michael's womb is shut up. She's not able to have no more children. I'm trying to tell somebody that is this. Don't try to fight with your enemy. God's got them. God's got them. But the Bible also says this, that David blesses his household. Okay, let me come get your family and spouses. That is this. Your spouse may mistreat you. You still be a blessing to them. Now, let me put a... No, I'll, I'll stop right there. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's just something, for, <laughs> something for another time. Amen. Okay. Come, come on, preachers. 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 I had to put a pen because I wanted to say. Okay, more preachers. Okay. Here's, here's, here's our invitation today. Here's our invitation today. I'm going to extend these invitations. One is that you need the Lord Jesus Christ, that you need to be saved, that you need his presence, and that you need his peace in your life. You, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the first invitation. The second invitation is that you need church, that you need church. And here's the reason why you need church, because you need to grow in your Christian faith. All of us need to grow in our spiritual maturity. You need church because the church equips you for you to grow in your spiritual maturity. On your job, here it is, they trained you so that you won't be the same way in your 10th year as you was in your first year. The church equips you and I to be spiritually mature to grow in faith. And thirdly, this invitation is for those who need prayer. Those who need prayer for themselves and you need prayer for somebody or you want to pray for someone else. Come on, come on, come on. Here it is. Come on. Adi, adi, I'm come free. That, that's an old game for y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, you know you need the Lord. You also know you need the church. You also know you need prayer. Come on. 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 You saying I'm I don't want nobody to know. Here it is. They the same boat you are in. Amen. They waiting on you. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on. Look at your neighbor say, you saved. Look at your neighbor say, you saved. Hey, hey, well, wait a minute. Look at your neighbor. Let's do this. I'm going to ordain you as a preacher. Look at your neighbor say, you saved. Look at your neighbor other on the other side say, you saved. Look at your neighbor. I want to say that same neighbor say, you sure you belong to a church? And look back at him and say, don't lie in church.
you I 
light, your battles, oh yeah, I'll fight your battles. I'll fight your battle if you would only trust me, trust me, oh trust me. And the Lord added to the church daily. Sister Linda Jackson has, wants to be a member of our family. Come on, Asbury. Amen. Oh, come on, Asbury. Amen. Come on, Asbury. Amen. Sister Linda wants to join our family. Amen. You're going to go with Pastor Adam. Amen. Follow Pastor Adam out. Amen. We have, we have one. We have uh, one more. So you may be seeing the presence of the Lord. We have one more important uh, moment here in the life of, of the church um, as we're all a great cloud of witnesses. If we have two baptisms this morning, amen. Hey, amen. We're going to ask, we're going to ask, we're going to ask, come on, we're going to ask, we're going to ask the youngest one to come first, the youngest one to come first. Amen. The youngest one. <clears throat> the youngest one to come first. Take me to Will it move? Water. Will it move? We're good. 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 we to be baptized. All, all members, you want to buy you, any, any other family members here? Okay, any, anyone else you want to be? Anyone? Oh, yeah, come on, family, come on, come on, family. Come on. Take me to the water. 
Amen. In, in the United Methodist denomination or um, following is this, that baptisms for children or, or for infants are what's called prevent grace, which means it's the grace that's available before we accept Jesus Christ in terms of our own um, confession. Because here it is, for all of us who are saved, grace was available to us. And so that same grace that was extended to us is now extended to our beloved here, Justice Amari Green. Amen. I got that around the first time. Amen. Amen. And so particularly I asked the family and particularly us as a church is that is this. Because one of the things in terms of what you're doing is you're making a commitment as a parent to bring your child up in the way of the Lord. I, as a pastor, I've got to say that I take this very seriously. And I want you to, too, not to enter into this lightly, but reverently. And us as a church, what we are agreeing to here in this covenant is that we are agreeing to look after Justice Amari Green. We don't take that lightly, but reverently, because we are in full connection. Also this, um, in the village of West Africa, it says it takes a village to raise a child. And here in the church, we are the village. So... Justice doesn't go without as long as you are connected to Asbury. That's, come on, come on. As long as he's connected to Asbury, justice doesn't go without. Because here's what I know. If the church doesn't take care of him, the world will try. We want the church to take care of justice so that justice doesn't want for anything. Amen. So we left, we left justice up to the one who was higher than him. I got you, man. We baptize justice in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now have before us Jamila Kyle Walters. Got that on the first try, too. Amen. <laughs> Same goes for your agreeing here in a covenant relationship to bring Jamila up in the ways of the Lord. Amen. Here at Asbury, what we are doing is we are covenant with you to look after Jamila, that she does not go without as long as she's connected here to Asbury. Amen. to the one who is higher than her. Can we baptize you in the name of the Father yeah. and of the Son. Don't get that on my suit. <laughs> Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Come on, come on, Asbury. Give God a hand clap of praise. We will, we will, now where, where, are, where, are the, where are the godparents, godmother, godparents, any other godparents we have, godparents, okay, okay, y'all got it, y'all got it, y'all got it, godparents, y'all got it, okay, all right, all right, all right, you may take your seats, amen, we will make sure that you have your um, certificates of, of this momentous occasion, we thank you for um, allowing us as a church, as a pastor, the privilege to Form this sacred sacrament. Amen. Didn't our hearts burn today? Just one, one more quick announcement. Today 
at 3 o'clock in the fellowship hall is the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is having estate planning um, information. And as I said last week, please, 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 if you don't have a will, if you don't have life insurance, please attend and please um, see Sister Carla Hunter as she has that information. One thing I don't want here as a pastor is this. I want you to be informed. Don't say you go to this church and you're not informed because I want you to have all the information. That way you're able to make life-changing, life-relevant, life-transforming decisions for the legacy of your entire family and your children's children. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's go home. Let us stand. Come on, come on, look at your look at look at your neighbor said, take time to celebrate. Take time to celebrate. Look on the other side, say, take time, take time to celebrate. Let's look to the Lord. Gracious God, we thank you for our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. May the grace of the Father, the peace and mercy of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest will abide henceforth now and forevermore. And together we say amen. 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 And amen. Have a strong week.